something that I think almost all my other colleagues have spoken about. It's needed. We need continuous capacity building because we train these students. In school, we tell them the do's and don'ts. They go into the industry, and the reality is staring them in the face. You have media houses where um, you're not on salary. Okay, there are a lot of people who are operating within media houses, and they are not on salary. They are supposed to go out there and fend for themselves. And how are you supposed to do that? Now, these are the relatives. So if you give them the continuous training and all this, then that would be very important. The issue about Soli, um, the inducement or the influence that we talk about, sometimes it's conscious, sometimes it's unconscious. And there are empirical evidence to suggest that, yes, people have changed the angle, they have to pick a story, uh, the weight they have to attach to a particular lead just because of one relationship or the other. And sometimes the reality is that you go out there, they give you something, and you would consider that to be just transport. But you write a story, and that same institution will call you and say, oh, Ujav, send any muti epan or Ujav story say about me. They're telling you, oh, really, despite all this relationship, is that the angle, is that the best angle you could pick that story from? So the reality is that, yes, those things doesn't really, really affect some journalism, but it does affect some other journalists. And the best way is, if we can avoid it, we should avoid it. Why should it be the responsibility of that organization to assist you to go and do your work? But this is why it has to be tied into the economic independence of the Ghanaian media. We keep on talking about, oh, yes, the Ghanaian media has been guaranteed that independence and freedom in the Constitution. But if we don't find a way of addressing this economic independence, then we really, really, really deluding ourselves. Because that is where the issue is. 